Welcome to our next edition of our Science Behind Running videos. Today we're discussing VO2max and in particular measuring VO2max on your wearable device. How accurate is it? Is it worthwhile even looking into it? And from now I'm going to hand over to Dev and he's going to uh, give you the ins and outs of the study. The study we'll be looking at today was done by Pablo Molina Garcia and colleagues titled Validity of Estimating the Maximal Oxygen Consumption by Consumer Wearables, a Systematic Review with Meta-Analysis and Expert Statement of the Interlive Network. All of that is a mouthful. What were they trying to prove? So there's two parts to this. Firstly, they were looking at seeing or testing the validity of VO2 max, so the maximal oxygen consumption in consumer wearable devices. And then the second part to it was giving the best practice advice on how to conduct future studies to test that reliability. So the methodology behind this particular study was actually done, the first part being a systematic review with the metadata of previous studies that have been done around VO2 max, around actual in-session VO2 max, so direct and indirect measures. So looking through many papers on the topic extrapolating the data that they required to then determine the validity of VO2 max readings on these consumer devices. The second part to it was they have uh, what they call the interlive network so it's a network of medical professionals uh, scientific professionals that are experts in their field and getting expert advice from these professionals as to what their recommendations would be for future studies to make sure that the accuracy of these devices and, wear and consumer wearables and how do we go about making sure that they are accurate, how do we go about testing these sort of validities in future. Now we know how this, the, the study was done, let's look at the findings. So essentially the main findings from the study is that when the wearable devices are estimating VO2 max, if they are using your resting data, so all of your data that you're in a resting state, you're not exercising, it is not an accurate measure of VO2. In actual fact, it really um, significantly overestimates what your VO2 max should be. The next finding from the study was that if it's measuring your VO2 max from, from data that you get from an exercise, so from your exercise data, so from your heart rate and your running, there is a, a, a bit of a relationship between your measured VO2 and the one that's coming from the watch, but again, it is still very, very unreliable. So when looking at the, the measured VO2, when we're looking at the exercise data, the authors stated that essentially it is, it is only really accurate when we're looking at it from a population level. When we're looking at an individual level of what that VO2 means, there is, there is a lot of variance that happens there. So if we're wanting to use this data from wearable devices and what VO2 is from wearable devices, if we want to sort of extrapolate that to a population, so to 40 to 50 year olds, that is somewhat accurate but when we want to look at an individual level does this watch tell me what my vo2 max is then there is a very big variance and it is not reliable at all so then that just means that we need to essentially when we're wanting to prescribe off that or if, we, if we're looking specifically for sporting activities we really really need to rather rely on direct measures of vo2 so that is done in a laboratory where we're actually really doing a proper breath by breath analysis and measuring your vo2 specifically for you the variance within this VO2 when compared to direct measures of assessment, so measures that were done in a laboratory, um, when we're looking at the resting measures, so the ones, the data that comes from a resting state, the, the difference in the measurements can go be up to 15 milliliters per kilogram. That is just the measurements of, of or the units that we use to measure VO2. When we're looking at an exercise data, uh, the, the error was up to 9 milliliters per kilogram, which really is a lot when, we, when we're looking at the difference between the lab test and the, the measures that come from the watch. And then the other big finding that, that uh, the authors find is that there is a lot of bias when we are looking at heart rate when compared from a chest strap versus a, a wrist based watch. And we've been, we've been talking about this a lot, uh, but it was just really, really good to see that, that it was verified again in the study. So when we're looking at VO2 max in this measurement, it is going to rely on heart rate. So we want to ensure that the, the, the 
your measurements of heart rate is reliable and so we really really have to ensure that we, we're measuring that with the chest strap because there is just so much bias when we're looking at heart rates off the wrist based measurements. The study also really looked at uh, how individual brands measure VO2 max on the watch so it was really really interesting to see. Polo as an example look at a number of different factors they look at uh, age, gender, height, body weight, resting heart rate and heart rate variability and then they also took some self-reported uh, data from from athletes so you would go for a run and say I ran for 30 minutes and put that in and then that works out your VO2 max from there. Garmin and Fitbit as an example used a, a very different uh, sort of methodology they took personal information so things like height and weight and and, and so on the, the requirement there was that they had to have age. They also looked at um, your exercise heart rate and speed, not pace, they looked at speed, all right? And then from there, they also looked at your, your time spent in different training zones and they segment that. And then they take the most reliable of those training zones and that's how they work out the VO2 max. Essentially, they just take your, your heart rate and your speed within a specific zone and create a linear uh, algorithm towards working out your VO2 max. For the Garmin and the Fitbits, when they in their white labeled paper, they spoke around that for running, they would look at a 5% variance on VO2 max for running and for walking around a 6% variance when compared to laboratory tests. However, this paper found that there was more like an 8 to 10% uh, variance or difference uh, compared to the, the wearable device to the laboratory test. For the polar variance, they were looking at an 8 to 10% um, disparity as well. So after all of that, what does this mean for you? Essentially, take this measurement of your VO2 max with a pinch of salt, okay? It's, it is not going to be absolutely reliable to you. From a population level, yes, it's some nice information. Don't get disheartened when you look at your VO2 max and it says that it's going down because very often when you're training correctly, if you're slowing down your easy runs and your heart rate is where we want it to be, it's going to look like your, your VO2 max is getting lower because of the algorithms that the companies use to work that out because they're taking your pace or your speed and your heart rate and if your speed is, is, is slowing down, it's going to show that your VO2 is going down but it is not a direct measure of your of your VO2 max and of your aerobic capacity so I would not get disheartened and I would not rely solely on this measure on your watch rather look at other factors and other metrics that will give you better indication of how your training is going. If you are interested in reading the full study it is in the description below you can check that out please also do keep in mind that science is always evolving there's always going to be changes and new theories and philosophies that do come up and this is also one particular paper that we found and decided to look into there are going to be many different angles many different aspects to something along the same sort of topic if you got value out of this video please hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to our channel and make sure you don't miss any of our future content.